It is open line tonight with Mayor Briley and also Ashford Hughes Sr., the Chief Diversity Officer in Metro Nashville. We are welcoming your calls tonight, and we have a few on the line to get to. Let's start with uh, Jim. We're taking these in orders of call, so Jim, go ahead with your question tonight. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, is, uh, when I see things such as the, uh, the, the city is doing now as far as diversity is concerned, what does that have to do with simple business practices? Because are we not looking for, as, a, uh, as someone that has the purse strings of a particular municipality, to find the best work for the best price? When you put the variables in, you are not giving the city the best work for the best price. And we all understand that there are folks out there that have a lot of animosity for those that might not be like them. But when it comes to simple business practices, this is a mistake. We find this in so in the the areas of our um, in the areas of our armed forces where they bring down the requirements to be able to provide diversity. We find that in our in our fire department when they bring down the requirements. Simple business, best price, and the best job. Okay. That's what you need to be doing. Thanks I would so like to hear your reaction to this. I think it is an argument that a lot of people speak to. If I may, I, I would tend to disagree with his statement. I believe that uh, what our disparity study uh, showed is that beyond just the normal business practice, those ethnic minority and women-owned businesses were not being utilized because of race and because of gender, right? So I don't think that we're... Um, we're uh, lowering the actual business capability. We're providing an equal atmosphere for uh, 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 not only creativity, but for competition. Mm. Uh, those businesses are just as well, those ethnic minority and women-owned businesses can operate just as well as our traditional uh, disadvantaged businesses, but they haven't been given a fair and a just seat at the table in order to compete. So that is all we're trying to do right now, and that is all this Equal Business Opportunity Ordinance does. It sounds like to me you're inviting more and making sure that more bids get in front of you, but you're still looking for the best person to do the job. Is that true? Sure, sure. I mean, and, and, I mean, just to be clear, so if we were buying a gallon of gasoline, mm -hmm. right, it's a little bit different, right? I mean, you definitely want to get the gasoline for the lowest price. But the city goes out and procures a lot of different other things, architects and engineers and construction. And um, there is more um, sense of subjectivity to that. And so um, we don't want to be a city where just because you know somebody mm -hmm. making the procurement decision, you get the job, right? Right. And so what this is all about is making sure that no matter what you look like, who you love, or what your uh, gender is, you're going to get a fair shot at doing um, business with the city. And uh, that's the kind of Nashville I think we are. We want to give everybody a fair shot. Um, and uh, and I'm also convinced that it's smart for the city because um, as getting more and more people involved in this kind of activity, it's gonna grow more and more uh, economic prosperity overall in our, in our city. It's gonna grow a bigger and bigger pie over time and give everybody a, a fairer shot at prosperity. So I understand his is concern, um, but it, it's just a little um, bit more complicated than that in terms of what we're doing um, as a city uh, in terms of going out and doing procurement. Nobody wants to go back to the moment where because m you knew the brother-in-law mm -hmm. of the person doing the contracting, you got the work. Are there any hard numbers though set forth in what the council, the action the council is taking saying 25% of our bids have to go to minority businesses or female businesses or LGBT businesses, whatever it may be? So what our study and what the Equal Business Opportunity is based on is uh, the utilization and the market availability of mm -hmm. those businesses within the city that can, within our MSA that can and will do the business. So within construction, there will be a particular amount uh, that we see that ethnic minority women-owned businesses will be able to meet. Within architectural and engineering, there's a number that will be competitive that they will be able to meet. So within each of the five categories, there is a different goal threshold that we know 
via the study that those businesses can and are able to compete to do. And it's a goal. It's not It's not mandatory. It's mm -hmm. a goal that we try to get to. I mean, we're, we're limited in terms of what the law allows, but we're setting these goals and we think that we'll be able to achieve them. We're also setting aside a little bit of the work in, or some of the work in terms of uh, making sure that smaller businesses have a chance to, to compete for some of the work as well because we know that if it's just all up to big business, they have some advantages that sure. keep smaller business from, is from ever getting mm -hmm. a chance. Okay, let's keep this m moving along. We have Lucy on the line. Hi, Lucy. Go ahead with your question. Hey, y'all. Hi there. Uh, my question is uh, for Mayor Briley, but first I, I need to make a statement, Mayor, because I, I get a little bothered when I hear uh, senior citizens in a bit of distress. Maybe it's me, but I thought that lady was talking about uh, the criminal justice system and it had been infringed upon and, and she had been kicked out of her house because of lying before the bar. So, you know, maybe it's just me. I didn't think her, I thought her issue was senior abuse. But anyway, Mayor Briley, my question is this. Uh, the police collect, uh, do a police report. You know, for instance, like those five children that shot that man the other day. I'm just curious. Uh, we said we're going to reform the criminal justice system, that it's not a one-size-fit-all kind of deal. You know, it's like we don't let all the juveniles out. Maybe we'll hold some back. We don't let everybody out on bond. Maybe we hold some people back. When the police do police reports, are y'all collecting data and doing statistical analysis and putting out any sort of raw data so we can start looking about how we're really going to reform the criminal justice system? I'll take your comments off air. Okay, thank you, Lucy. You know, no matter where I've gone this weekend, everybody is talking about what happened on Friday with an right. innocent man shot five children as Lucy said they are children now charged with murder and this is not the, I mean we hear crime after crime after crime in the city some really serious stuff by very young children I mean it's crazy um, and I think people do want to know more about what's working and what's not working right uh, so uh, I think everybody is right to be terribly concerned about about that shooting and uh, uh, obviously, our hearts go out to the to the uh, family and family. friends yeah. of, of the young man who, who died, and um, but uh, at the same time, you know, we got to sort of step back and ask ourselves, how is it that five young people, including a 12-year-old, yeah. end up under those circumstances at all? Now, Judge Sheila Calloway, who mm -hmm. I'm sure has been here before, yeah. uh, is working hard at juvenile court to try and confront these circumstances, and she is keeping very good data, and they are working hard to make sure that they are um, trying to confront those uh, young people who early. That is that's just a fundamental part of it, to try and keep them uh, on a better path so that they don't end up under these kind of circumstances. One of the, I, I think one of the scariest things that we're seeing right now is younger and mm -hmm. younger people with guns. Yes. And uh, for anybody who has a handgun and leaves it in your car, I would just ask you right now not to do that anymore because that is the number one way that we're seeing young people get guns. They are going mm -hmm. from car to car, looking for doors open, stealing cars, and getting guns out of the glove compartments. So um, That's exactly what happened in this case, so, so know that it is truly happening. And so we have really got, as a community, as a culture, as a city, to stop doing that mm -hmm. because it ends up in tragic situations like this. Um, so um, we all can take a little bit of responsibility yeah. and, and really I think change this to a degree. Now um, I'm going to work with the district attorney and with the police and with Judge Calloway to look and see if there are other things we can do. We'll make some additional investments in um, some programs this summer that confront youth violence. But I think we've got to dig deep on this one and mm -hmm. try and figure out if there's more that we need to be doing. And to Lucy's question, um, the data, the statistics, what's being kept and what's being looked over? Well, uh, juvenile crime data is generally going to be confidential. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to be available to the public, at least to look directly at I any particular individual. But Judge Callaway is doing a good job of trying to collect more data early on about young people and their families and trying to get a better handle on what the early um, indicators of this kind of conduct are so that we can start to intervene at an earlier age with, with young people. What about when it comes to adults? 
what's being kept by the police department, what's being studied? Well, the, they uh, study data like crazy. So um, I think it's every Friday morning uh, they will meet mm -hmm. over at North Precinct and go over the data for each precinct on, on, a, on a very um, detailed basis to look at where criminal conduct is taking place, um, where they need to refocus uh, their resources to try and reduce crime. And um, you're, we're seeing that in some areas, crime is actually coming down. You know, we did better on murders this year mm -hmm. uh, that, as opposed to last year, although one murder is one too many. Yeah. Um, uh, but we are seeing some violent crime going up. We're seeing more car burglaries mm -hmm. than we've seen before, car um, thefts. So um, they do a great job of looking at, at that and are working hard to try and um, uh, get their resources used as, as effectively as possible. Okay, we have to take another quick break. When we come back, Ann and James, I'm gonna get to you first. Stay with us.